Uh, some of you, or well, I think pretty much all of you who are involved in the internet or active on the internet, probably know our next speaker. Uh, and uh, uh, probably got a lot of answers, a lot of help from the website that he provides. It's called Film Tech. And we have Brad Miller and Jeremy. Thank you for coming out tonight or today. Hey everyone, hope you hear me in fact. My name is Brad Miller. Many of you don't know me personally, but you've probably heard of the website, filmtech.com. I'm the owner and founder of Film Tech Cinema Systems. As this is the year for conversion to digital cinema, the information presented here today by all the speakers is really going to prove invaluable. Uh, before I start, Justin, Martin, thank you for putting this together. FilmTech started with a simple concept, information exchange. For over 12 years now, we've kept the FilmTech website running with the largest archive of equipment manuals, online discussions, picture tours of theaters around the world. We've kept this free to everyone in this industry to hopefully better their presentation and to trade tips and tricks. FilmTech is a small company, not unlike yourselves. We operate with a staff of about 20 detail-oriented people all with passion for this industry and personal goals of being the absolute best. Going back a couple of years, in the late 80s, I was troubled by presentation issues that I felt distracted from the overall experience, namely dirt and scratches on the film prints. I set out to put an end to those problems with a completely different approach to film cleaning. During the testing period, many other issues started popping up due to the introduction of polyester film stocks, drone prints, static, frame wraps, the results of about 10 years of testing was seen publicly in 1999 when I patented and released FilmGuard publicly. Many of you are familiar with the tremendous results of that product. Many of you may use it. Uh, today, FilmGuard is the only film cleaner available that meets EPA requirements. It's used every day by labs, post-production houses, and theaters. At least the ones that haven't gone digital yet. Shortly after that, we invented other things like the safety ring to solve other platter issues. Uh, we posted tutorials on the website to further help presentations and so forth. Jumping forward several years, digital was starting to gain momentum. People were finding out that digital cinema isn't perfect. People were finding out digital cinema did have problems. Digital cinema did still have projectionists. Digital cinema did and still does have dark screens. Content, not monitoring, BPFs, Cinelink encryption issues, firmware updates, incorrect KDMs, the list goes on and on, and it still does today for many people. With all the technology today, the answer is simple. Why are these systems so primitive? Why do these problems still exist? Even today, in 2001, everyone's in the garden. In 2008, we were met with a challenge. Brian Schultz, the studio movie girl chain, approached me and asked for a digital booth that actually did what the industry was claiming. And that was a truly automated booth. His requirement was that the system had to be smart enough to follow whatever was programmed into their ticketing system. The shows were to always start on time, even if they made a last minute change to the schedule, switched auditoriums around. And there would be no projectionist of any sort and that the booth could run perfectly by itself without a human entering at all for weeks or months, not even to turn off breakers. He wondered what the industry had been promising everyone, but thus far it failed to deliver. To quote him, he wanted it to just work. At the time it seemed impossible, but always up for a challenge. My crew and I set out to do just that. We spent six months designing and building those first systems. To this day, that building has ran flawlessly day after day. For our next digital theater project, my techs and I decided that although our first attempt was a solid success, we couldn't possibly keep building systems that complex to do this type of job. So we set out to simplify the system without sacrificing any of the features or reliability that that first system had proven. That theater and every theater since has been a success. Earlier this year, just before CinemaCon, we released those systems publicly we are now the only company in the world that offers a 100% truly turnkey system that is projectionist list and just works without any effort from the theater staff. I'm sure all of you are probably thinking that this system is out of your reach. Think again. When you do the math, as Jeremy will explain, you will find these systems are actually the least expensive on the market. 
they are miles ahead of everything else available. And uh, don't trust the salesman, we'll prove it to you. I'd like to introduce you to Jeremy Sprackle. He's been behind the scenes with Film Tech for 10 years. He's been a key part. He will introduce you to the Film Tech DCS system. Thank you. Last speaker, and then we'll get off to our questions. Um, as Mark will tell you, we're very direct. We'll answer any question. Uh, I think there's there's still a lot of things and concern with a lot of the, the non-disclosure. There's not not a lot of the information that's getting out, and then there's a lot of misinformation. People think they know what they're talking about, and it's not getting out. We will shoot you straight. If we don't know the answer, we'll try to get it for you. Um, so what we do is the entire duration in the theater and as you move to conversion. So we have a little flow chart. Uh, we go, and it starts with financing. We work with many different financing companies. We will have them compete against each other to try to get you the best rate. We will work for you so that you're not having to go to your bank and then this bank and this bank. We've already got everything set up. We can get that for you. Then it goes to VPF integration. And a lot of the other speakers have already talked about it. We can work with all of them. We're sending it out and approve not. We can work with GDC. That way, when you're having to write your checks to the financing company, you're getting money already. But not all money coming from BPS covers the finance. You have to do something else to make sure that you're, you're covering that gap. We've built an extensive energy management system for that so that you're cutting your costs at the theater to bridge that gap between BPF integration and finance. Whenever a client comes to us, we will get the, the specs, the throw and the screen size like everyone's already talked about. But we'll also, obviously, we need to know if you're going to do 3D. We will work up models based on how many tickets that you have, what 3D option works the best for you. For a drive-in, it's going to be Dolby 3D. But for an indoor theater, there might be, there, there's the real system, which has very low upfront cost, which you're paying the licensing per ticket. In the long run, you may see that you're spending four or five times over a certain period of time. You're paying for that system four or five times over what you would have bought a Dolby for. If you lower ticket sales, another one might work. Uh, so we would look at that. Uh, we also need to know what sound system you have. If you're going to have to, if you've got an older sound system, you may or may not have to have it replaced. But it's a significant cost, and if people are just looking at the server and the projector, they need to know these other costs. So when they come to us, we give them a full calculator of what they would expect to pay, they'll give us the commercial electricity rate. We'll compare uh, different models of projectors. We will find what is the best, what they'll expect to be paying, and what they expect to save over from one projector to another. Uh, screen gains, also very important. Obviously, if you're going for uh, a polarized system, you have to put in a silver screen. But you can find that often, if you go from a 1 to a 1.4, you can jump down to a lower size projector, save five, six thousand dollars in that jump, but only spend four thousand dollars on the screen. You're already two thousand dollars ahead. And then I just highlighted down here uh, on this sample, this was a 45 foot screen for one game screen. Uh, we were looking at thirty seven hundred dollar savings for one year and then a thirty seven thousand dollar savings for ten years. And that's one screen. That's not a complex. So what can do this energy management? We had to have a hardware solution to do that. And that hardware solution is the PCs. It's a very compact, clean, they're all essentially identical. They do have some options. Okay. Uh, and on conversion, you wouldn't necessarily need the amps. Uh, you can put it in there and make all clean. If you've already got an existing sound rash, there's no reason to pay something to move them all over and rewire them. Uh, same thing with the, the wireless microphones. If you're in a big event house that is doing a lot of content, have your own guest speakers, anything like that, you want to have that in there so that you're not having to have people wire over and over. I mean, sometimes if you've got multiple houses, they may have the microphone set up in one house and the next, and So that's an overview of the system. And here is the brand. This is uh, FT21, which is exclusive to film tech. Uh, it looks like some of the, the older ones, but I assure you it does a lot more. Uh, most automation systems right now go back to what you don't have. They can do lights, they can restart a show, they can do masking changes, sound changes, that's relatively it. 
a lot of our energy management works in that this will also control all of your breakers and your air conditioning. Some systems will have the automation, then they'll have another energy management system. This is all one place and it works off your ticketing system. So that if you move movies around, it will follow, it will power up the auditorium for you, it will shut it down at the end of the night. If you have multiple houses, if one auditorium gets out an hour after everything else, there's no reason to run the HVAC and the lights and the projector fans and everything in the house that's not running. This takes care of that. Some of these features may not be applicable to drive-in theaters. We understand that, but there are still pieces of equipment in that booth that can be controlled and turned off to save you money. To go down to the front end of the system, we are server agnostic. We're actually completely hardware agnostic. We want to make sure that we get you the best equipment. We are not just salespeople for a particular manufacturer. We work with all of them. We're projector agnostic, server, 3D. In this case, there's a Adobe 3D. Right above that, you can see a Blu-ray player. It's a DVD Blu-ray player. Uh, it's standard in every system so that you can make take advantage of alternative content options. Um, but the best thing is, it's automated. So if you have, say, a policy trailer, regular movie trailers that you want to show, and then switch over to the DVD and run the movie, the trailers and, and your intro off the server and seamlessly change into the DVD. Uh, you can also credit offsets with that and it will run exactly like a DCP show. Uh, we also have a scaler up there, and I wish I brought another picture for it, that uh, you can plug in a uh, computer, you can plug in a video source, anything like that, and it's a one button uh, change. It changes the audio, it changes the video, and it does the sizing all from one button on the front panel. Uh, we also have, uh, I know that uh, Scott was talking about having a monitor with every uh, system that he would like to have there. Ours is included inside the pedestal. Uh, it's just, it just makes it a little cleaner kind of look. And I brought, this is uh, one that's about 15 miles away from here now. This just kind of gives you an idea of what, what our system looks like in an actual operating environment. So there's, there's a couple of them. One of the other great features that you can see that makes this all really easy is that we have feeders on our system and feed the over so that when you get a couple into your you can just roll them up. Uh, we already have everything pre-configured, pre-IP, everything. So you literally just roll it to the right house, put the projector on top. We've got a, uh, an automation interface board here that we can pre-ship so that you can do every all of your wiring there in a chair and not having to get inside the pedestal to do all of your, your lighting and your masking and any other. It simply bolts to the front of the pedestal quick connect DBs are hanging tied down right there. It's impossible to connect it wrong. You can literally connect this in two minutes. So the question is, if it does all these things and it's going to save us all this money, what does a complete system cost? And that's another thing, we're real straight shooters, we'll tell you. You know, a lot of people will have to have NDAs or they'll have to get everything up and down. That's what the whole thing is. And when I say system, that is a projector lens, first bolt, the complete ECS, Blu-ray player, the UPS, all the internal, you know, we're talking about network switches and UPSs and, and everything inside. This is what you would need for your screen. Now there would be additional electrical requirements. We don't do that. We'd have to hire an electrician um, for anything that would have to change from that point. But hardware, that's what you need. Now, on top of the hardware solution, there's also the knobs. The knock is a very, very important part of what we do and what sort of separates us from the, the other knocks and the other hardware available. So going into the knock solution. Uh, we're what's considered a full service knock. We are not just monitoring in that uh, a lot of the monitoring situations, all it does is if a piece of equipment uh, says, I've got a problem, it will respond to the knock and it will say, I've got a problem. Sometimes equipment goes, shuts down to the point where it can't say, I have a problem with the thing, or I have a problem with the temperature, or something like that. So we are constantly uh, monitoring out, calling out, uh, checking out the equipment, but we also do all of the, the issues that Brad was talking about before, the KDMs, the, the chasing down content, because 
uh, the technical error drive get delivered to the wrong place. Uh, anything like that, R not takes care of. So we do a lot of the, the role that your projections would normally, would normally play so that you can focus on your customers and the, the other issues that come up without worrying. We have the trained technicians are helping to run your show. Um, the other big thing uh, that we covered in there um, is playlist building. If you get a GC or do re me or a Q or uh, the Dolby, uh, especially if you had multiple ones inside one building, you would have to learn the interfaces for each one. The way that our system works, you've got one website, and if you go to our website and mm -hmm. you're familiar with it, you will see a place called Client Login. It's been there for, for uh, since we've done the, the rebuild. And it will take you to a screen like this. And you just select your trailers. It pulls the information from your server. So it actually knows what's in your building. You're not trying to play a Star Wars trailer, even though you never got to drive it. Uh, and it will tell you what the attached is supposed to be. You have the option of whether or not you know, it fits for your operation. If you're not booked for that movie, you can pull it off. Hidden inside of this is your policy trailers, your sound logos, your snipes, anything that you tell us what you want it to play. There's no way that anyone could have accidentally move them, get them out of order, or anything like that. They're all there. So again, being very direct, $60 a site, $60 a screen. Very cheap, very easy. On top of that, we're also, uh, we're also talking about the, the libraries, the LMSs, and the additional cost that that brings to the exhibitor having to move the content around. That price includes a free contact library for as long as you are on the knob service. Uh, it is a proprietary system that, that we use, and it interfaces, again, if you've got four different models of, of DCI servers, we can integrate with all of them. Now, uh, if that isn't enough for you, the other big thing is used systems. Right now, we've got uh, a waiting list, but we've, we've got them coming out of service. We've got Marco Series 1 projectors with the Gore board upgrade, which, Martin, do you remember how much the Gore board usually is? Oh, depending on projector, anymore from like for $4,000, $5,000. Right, a very expensive gotcha sort of thing. So if you bought a Series 1 used projector that <coughs> didn't have that, that is required for DCI clients. Comes with a standard lens. Um, Barco is being very helpful with trying to do an exchange for driving lenses. They're usually very, uh, a lot more expensive because of the, uh, it, it actually goes over to an AV lens instead of a standard lens, but they're being very helpful in helping us exchange those for a driving lens. A bowl, a Dolby server, and a new FilmTech DCS. So everything you saw in there, all the automation, everything like that, and a one-year warranty, which is very, very important. I think we're ready for the questions. For the panel. Thank you very much.